cases died. The driver involved still on the run. And investigators are continuing to search for leads. Police say that 30-year-old Stephanie Tripp was hit by a car last Tuesday on Old Bedford Road in Westport. She was rushed to a Rhode Island hospital where she later died. Police say a preliminary investigation showed the victim was walking on the side of the road when she was hit. Police say the man driving that car stopped, apologized, and then took off. So investigators say that they're looking for the driver of a gray BMW 3 Series car is most likely a model from 1999 through 2005. Police say that the car will likely have front end damage and passenger side damage as well. Anyone with information on this case is urged to contact police. Also breaking Massachusetts highest court has ordered the release of convicted child rapist Wayne Chapman. The court ruled that Chapman can no longer be civilly committed after two mental health professionals concluded that he was no longer a threat to public safety. Chapman, however, was or was convicted of raping and sexually assaulting a six-year-old six-year-old boys in the 1970s but despite this court order he's still in custody because of charges stemming from incidents at mci shirley from last year the ruling says that chapman cannot post the twenty five thousand dollars bail needed for his release so it's unlikely that it's likely he'll remain behind bars and we're following more breaking news out of boston right now a delta flight making a hard landing at logan airport sky 7 hd over that plane as it was being escorted uh, off the tarmac there. Now, no one on board was hurt. Firefighters did respond on the runway. There's no word on what have, may have caused that hard landing. Also on 7, a Whitman teacher is on leave as police investigate an alleged case of inappropriate conduct. Police say it involved an elementary school student. 7's John Coco has more. Whitman police say they were told about this alleged contact yesterday. That's when they started their investigation, right here at this school. It's here at the Duval Elementary School that a teacher has been placed on administrative leave. Whitman police are investigating an allegation of inappropriate contact between the teacher and a student. Police say it was reported yesterday morning, just before 10. The alleged contact was reported to a Whitman police school resource officer. We're told school officials immediately placed the teacher on administrative leave, and Whitman police launched an investigation. Police say as of Thursday morning, the investigation is ongoing. At this point, police have not filed any charges. In Whitman, John Coco, 7 News. To the ice where the Bruins continue their quest for the cup. The Bees could earn their ticket to the Stanley Cup Finals if they can win game four tonight against the Carolina Hurricanes. That would make it a clean sweep in the series. And a big <laughs> reason for the big 3-0 lead, Tuka Rask. He was huge Tuesday night. <coughs> the are hoping that he'll be on fire once again. Joe Amorcino is in Raleigh with more. Slavin just delays and shot one. Let's get it reflected. Oh, that's great. Oh, right now, he's, he's definitely in the zone. Pass across for shot. What a save made by Rask. He's in the zone right now. 20 first period saves, 35 total saves, oftentimes making it look easy. But what does it mean to actually be in the zone? This is how Tuca sees it. Being in the zone, I don't know. Nobody knows what that means. You know, it's just you know, it looks that. But I like the way the way I usually want to play. I want to play calm and and you know make myself look big and, and you know, be top chances trying to you know make it look easy kind of. So uh, you know if that, it's in the zone, then so be it. Tuka, the star of the show, and Charlie McAvoy, after playing a solid game himself, could only watch while Tuka owned the post game spotlight. Thanks for coming, Chuck. <laughs> my, mic, my mic does work <laughs> Tuca, Chuck and the rest of the Bruins now one win away from their third Stanley Cup final in nine years and if they've learned one thing over the last decade no <coughs> until it's over <coughs> play like we need it we needed that win um, that's how we approached last game um, and that was a big one you know go from 2-1 to 3-0 so it's we had that mindset that you know we want to take advantage of this opportunity that's that's before us right now and and we did that now we had to do the same thing we had to come out hard just like they're gonna and they'll have to do it without chris wagner in game four tonight he is out and already back in boston for further evaluation after suffering an arm injury in game three noel achari will step into the lineup in his place reporting in raleigh north carolina joe amrosino 7 News. As the Bruins continue their quest to the Stanley Cup Finals, the news station as you cover, Joe's going to stick around down in Raleigh, North Carolina for Game 4 tonight. You can catch his live reports right here on the news station.
Some serious trouble on the commuter rail this morning. Passengers trying to get into the city left waiting with delays lasting hours. Things back to normal right now, but it was a tough commute, commute this morning. Seven's Byron Barnett has more. Everyone was frustrated. Anger and frustration boiling over as commuter rail passengers arrived at South Station this morning, many of them more than two hours late for work. Too late to talk? I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, how bad was it on the train? Three and a half hours commute. What was the mood like? What was... What was everybody's, everybody's mad. Commuter rail officials say train number 800 on the Providence line left Providence at 5 a.m. and then got stuck in Sharon because of a mechanical problem. They didn't give us any warning. It's just a disaster. And they told us, okay, well, go to the other side of the track, and we are sending another train. We went to the other side of the track, and the train just left. It was one of the most ridiculous things MBTA did. Commuters were stranded on the train and forced to wait for another train to come along and push the disabled train all the way into South Station. It's extremely frustrating, especially when they want to raise the fares in July. There's just no accountability. The frustrating thing is nobody's, nobody's held accountable. The train finally limped into South Station at 8.30 a.m., leaving passengers in a sour mood following a miserable commute. Paying hell of a money for the pass and never get the service. I've been riding 20 years this train. <laughs> Nothing changed. Commuter rail officials say the mechanical problem was with the train's locomotives. They say that the T has recently approved funds to overhaul several locomotives, which they say should improve reliability. In the meantime, officials say they appreciate the passengers' patience. At South Station, I'm Byron Barnett, 7 News. 7 News now turning to the abortion battle across the nation, where Alabama's governor has now signed off on a measure to ban most abortions in that state. And it all comes as Missouri passes one of the strongest measures against abortion in the country as well. Kim Lucy explains. Missouri State Senate now the latest to pass a bill banning abortion, making the procedure illegal at eight weeks into pregnancy. The only exceptions are for medical emergencies, not rape or incest. Missouri's law would also ban abortion on the basis of sex, race, or indication of Down syndrome and mandate that both parents be notified in cases involving a minor. Democrats had been attempting a filibuster by taking turns speaking on the Senate floor. The bill passed early this morning. This is an unconscionable use of our power as a legislature uh, that will have negative rep repercussions for the long term. I'm, I'm not a legal expert, legal scholar, uh, but I do believe that what we're putting forth here uh, it strengthens our position uh, on life. Uh, and anything we can do to protect life, I've always been in support of. That bill still needs to pass the Republican-led House. Missouri's governor has said he would sign it. Its passage comes on the heels of a controversial vote in Alabama, a near-total abortion ban. Alabama lawmakers say the intent of their law is to get it to the Supreme Court. Protesters making their voices heard outside Alabama's state capitol after the governor signs a controversial anti-abortion bill into law. The bill's sponsor says their goal goes further than state lines. They want to take on Roe v. Wade. We'll never get a heartbeat bill to be constitutional until Roe v. Wade is decided and reversed. And so... I think everybody understood that. Alabama's bill bans abortion at every stage of pregnancy. Those seeking the procedure would not be punished, but doctors performing abortions would face 99 years in prison. Women would only be able to get an abortion if their life is at risk. There is no exception for rape or incest. As a physician, I feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, on one hand, I can end up serving jail time, but on the other hand, if I don't do what's best for my patient and my patient is harmed, then I have to worry about potential litigation from the patient or her family. That should never happen. Alabama joins four other states that passed bills limiting abortion this year and 11 other states that introduced similar legislation. We must do everything that we can to protect life. Advocates say the time is right to challenge the Supreme Court's 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling. The makeup on the Supreme Court has changed where there's possibly enough conservatives on there who would believe Roe v. Wade is incorrectly decided. But prominent conservatives evangelist Pat Robertson says he thinks Alabama may have gone too far. They want to challenge Roe versus Wade, but my humble view is that this is not the case we want to bring to the Supreme Court because I think this one will lose. 
Legal analysts say the law in Alabama could be overturned by a lower court for being unconstitutional before it even makes it to the Supreme Court. The law there does not go into effect right away. That's set for six months from now. Both the ACLU and Planned Parenthood say they plan to fight it. In the newsroom, Kim Lucy, 7 News. Turning now to the president's agenda, President Trump yeah. addressing immigration. This afternoon, he's expected yeah. to unveil a new plan to move the nation towards a merit-based immigration system. 7's Dan Housley is live in the newsroom with a closer look at what this measure could include. Dan. Well, the mock of President Trump laying out his plan to fix uh, the nation's immigration system in just a couple of hours, although it's already being criticized not only for what's in it, but for what it isn't as well. We are calling on Congress to fix our terrible immigration laws. Stop. President Trump warming up Congress for an immigration fix, he says, is simple. Yeah. That can be changed in 20 minutes. What the fuck you're doing. 20 minutes. Yeah. If they want to change it. The president's proposal is one he directed his son-in-law and senior advisor, Jared Kushner, to come up with. It involves overhauling the current immigration system to make it merit-based, favoring oh, job <laughs> skills yeah. over family ties. The White House says the new proposal draws from immigration systems in Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. Critics are already pouncing. What they're saying is you have to be amazingly brilliant. You probably have to be whiter. Diversity visas, again, are gone. And you can't even serve in the military. Democrats complain the plan doesn't address the massive influx of migrants at the southern border or a solution for dreamers, the undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. as children. The White House says leaving out DACA was intentional. Every single time uh, that we have put forward or anyone else has put forward any type of immigration plan and it's included DACA, it's failed. That's a divisive thing. But it's not just Democrats. Many Republicans are reportedly lukewarm to the president's proposal. Senator Lindsey Graham, an ally of the president, presented his own immigration plan, but says no bill will pass without bipartisan support. You're going to have to get Democrats in the room. And Senator Graham says President Trump's plan isn't designed to become law. The White House, though, calls it a serious proposal. Live in the newsroom, Dan Housley, 7 News. We're following more news today. Berlin police say that a man has died after getting trapped under a car at an auto body shop. Sky 7 HD over the scene on Wednesday afternoon. It happened on Central Street. Police say the victim was the owner of the business. A house in Boxford going up in flames, killing several animals that were inside the fire, the shooting from this home, and you could see it through that thick smoke. It was on Main Street Wednesday. Crews from neighboring towns were called in to help out. Officials say two dogs, a cat, and several birds were inside, and they died in the fire. New at noon, two weeks after an armed robbery in Quincy, police say they have a suspect. Authorities have identified the man seen in this video of the robbery. Police say the suspect waved a knife and demanded cash from the clerk at a liquor store. So far, no arrests have been made. Friends and family are going to honor a life that was tragically cut short in Dighton. 14-year-old Ryan Hayes was killed after he was mauled by dogs last sure. week. Friends and family are going to gather to pay their respects to this young man on Saturday. Yeah. Ahead on 7 News, a terrifying drive. Look at this. A Utah woman talking about the moment a metal beam came crashing through her windshield. What she says saved her life. And the race is over, but the drama far from finished. The infamous derby disqualification now sparking a court battle. And temperatures have been warming all week. They keep warming into the weekend. We're talking 70s. We'll have that full forecast next. And now, the world of Xfinity. Xfinity from Comcast continues to innovate its products and services. Looks to like they're killing that motherfucker, huh? The, you can ask what your Wi-Fi password is. If you have good. Xfinity Home, you can control your smart thermostat. You can call Fucking up your phone crap. camera on your big screen, and you can even see and pay your bill all through the X1 voice remote. Another great feature is the ability to search Netflix, Jesus Amazon Christ. Prime, and YouTube, all within X1. So, no more switching devices or remote. No more switching. What a bunch of shit. <coughs> of course, they took my video down of Cappy. It was too bro. You got too many people sucking his balls. I saw the videos out there sucking Cappy's nuts. I think I've seen only one or two fucking, you know, blast into the guy for being the total piece of rat fucking lying shit using blood sucker that he is. Fucking Cappy the scumbag. Give me a fucking. He's probably in Australia right now sucking Fiona's twat. A dirty fat whore. 
Fiona, you're a fat whore. Fucking right. Again, hey, who's going to go to his funeral? They should all be going. All the creators. We can all create together. We're going to go to Cappy's whore funeral. Fucking rat piles of shit. Enough to make you want to fucking yak your guts up. Fucking Christ. No shit. Red Cross fucking rip off. Cappy. Fucking exposed nothing. Nobody killed him. Fucking idiot. Didn't commit suicide. Just another piece of shit that disappears. That's all. <sighs> Laughing his Jew balls all the way to the bank. He's down there dancing right now. We should play his dance video. Remember Snappy Cappy. For the helpers. Rat fuck. Saturday and Sunday. 61 right now in Boston, 68 Norwood, Worcester, a cool spot, 58 degrees, but it's nice. Yes, we have the clouds out there. You see those cumulus clouds starting to pop up. We got some sunshine early, and that's enough instability to pop these clouds up, and with some of those, enough also to bring in a couple of sprinkles or a light shower. So, no, we are not dry through the afternoon. Unfortunately, we'll have these light sprinkles, these little scattered showers to deal with, and we'll have them basically until the sun sets. These are entirely fueled by the sunshine that we have today, that instability. So, when the sun goes down, we'll lose the fuel and the shower chance will go away. Watch this on the future forecast here. Again, 3 o'clock, very spotty stuff. So I wouldn't necessarily pay attention to the placement because these could just pop up all over. But the key here is that they're with us till about 7 o'clock tonight. After that, the sun really loses its strength. The shower chance goes away. We clear out through the overnight. Unfortunately, some clouds back in here for your Friday. And again, the potential of a little shower here or there. Again, it'll be very hit and miss. But as we head into the day on Friday, I would not be shocked to see a couple spots, maybe close to that 70 degree mark. But we will get close to 70, if not in the 70s, heading into the weekend. So, of course, it's graduation. A lot of people are coming into town. We have a great weekend here. Sun filled on Saturday. A little breezy, though. We'll get up to about 70 degrees of partly cloudy skies. And just the smallest chance of a little sprinkle or a shower on Sunday. Nothing to be concerned about. 71 degrees. A little bit more cloud cover, but again, all in all, this weekend looking really fantastic. Partly cloudy tonight. Winds will be pretty light. Temperature 45 to 52 for the day tomorrow. Partly to mostly cloudy skies. Again, those pop-up showers are possible. It's not an all-day washout for tomorrow, but it's just something to keep in mind. Upper 60s to, yes, would not be shocked to see some 70s on the map tomorrow. 70s do become common, though, heading into the weekend. Saturday, we're dry. 70. Mild on Sunday, 71. We really warm up for Sunday. Scattered storms are possible. Yeah, we're talking thunderstorms with these, not just showers, so kind of that summer vibe going on 76 degrees on monday then the cold front rolls through that brings those showers it does cool us down but even 68 close to 70 for a cool down for the middle part of the week not bad talk about an extremely extremely close call on seven news now utah woman narrowly avoids danger when this five foot metal beam goes crashing right through her windshield she says it's a miracle that not only was she not hurt she wasn't killed and now she's explaining what she thinks saved her life seven's caitlin mccauley has the story it seemed like any other day for Nikki Sanders. I drive it all the time. A routine Monday drive on a Utah highway. You kind of go into autopilot. Quickly took a terrifying turn. I saw it in the sky. A five-foot-long metal beam flying toward Sanders as she sat in the driver's seat. An explosion of glass. I just can't believe that I, I'm alive. Sanders says she had to use some quick thinking. I was both hands on the wheel and was completely aware of my surroundings. She swerved as far as she could to the left without driving into the median. The beam, it stopped, barely missing her. If I had been doing anything different, I'd be dead. Her actions are probably what helped save her. Utah Highway Patrol says the metal piece fell off of a truck. The truck driver kept going, apparently unaware of the damage left behind. We don't get a lot of calls for items that can cause this much damage. But the officer says debris-related crashes are not uncommon. Just last year, they say there were nearly 700 such crashes reported in Utah. Just get so lazy with things and on autopilot, and we just don't pay attention to that. In Sanders' case, paying attention during a critical moment may have been the difference between life and death. I would have died. I mean, it was... A miracle. Utah Highway miracle. Patrol located the truck company and issued the driver a citation. In the newsroom, Caitlin McCulley, 7 News. Coming up on the news station, the derby drama continues. Why the owners of the horse that was historically 
disqualified or taking the case to court. Water rushing just about everywhere when a dam gives way in Texas. Video capturing this chaotic collapse. Get a bunch of fucking bullshit, huh? Now's the perfect time That's to work with California bullshit. Closets. During our Finish Upgrade event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to a premium finish. Visit a California